There's been a lot that's happened here on this original campus over the past month. And today we're here to share with you some of the wonderful things that have been going on and also some of the updates of exciting things to come. I'd like to remind everyone that if you want to view the past presentations of the open forum, you can do so by going to the neighborhood website. If you want to look at the video, you can navigate to management and then management presentations. If you'd like to look at the slides, you can go to management and then executive corner. Our next meeting will actually be our quarterly town hall meeting. That'll be held a month from today, March 19th. The time is at 11 a.m. and the location still to be determined. We will make sure we get that notification out to everyone prior to the meeting. As I mentioned, we have a great deal of information to share with all of you today. And I'd like to start that off by introducing Robert Sorensen. Robert is our Director of Wellness and he's going to provide an update on wellness and campus life. Thank you, Celeste. Here to provide you with the latest and greatest in wellness and campus life. It is that time of the year where we all want to be outside enjoying the outdoor environment. So I only thought it pertinent to share some updates on our outdoor recreation programs. Bocce is in full swing right now. We have a resident driven social bocce group that gathers and plays every Saturday morning at 9.30 a.m. out at the bocce courts here on the original campus. No invite is required. No prior skills are needed. Bocce is for everyone. I encourage you to go out and give it a shot if you haven't already. This piggybacks on top of our monthly wellness coordinated bocce programs. Most recently, our resident and partner bocce event where we saw approximately 30 participants come out and enjoy an afternoon of bocce. An exciting piece that we have coming soon is a new product uh, consisting of both residents of the Moorings Park original campus and the Moorings Park Gray Oaks campus where we'll have a rotating schedule of tournaments back and forth between the two campuses. So if you're involved in the bocce program and if you haven't heard about it already you certainly soon will. If not, feel free to reach out to me and I can provide you with some additional details. If you're a resident living in the A&G Tower and have taken a look out of your uh, window facing east, you've likely seen that the grass is not so green right now. We're in that transition period, shifting our putting chipping area back into green space as well as some astroturf for an artificial putting green. So although out of commission right now, it's going to soon be back bigger, better than ever, and Scott will provide some amplify, uh, amp of amplifying information on that here shortly. And several weeks ago, I released a pulse survey gathering interest on the game of croquet. This was prompted by a new resident move-in who is very passionate about the game, and I thought it pertinent to, to get an idea of what sort of resident interest we have in the sport of croquet. Turns out that interest is uh, very much alive, so that particular resident and I are still working to seek out an appropriate place to set up a temporary croquet area just so that we can offer yet another program to our residents here on the original campus. Looking forward towards the end of March, we'll have a resident outing to Pop Stroke in Fort Myers. Pop Stroke is a putting facility uh, designed by Tiger Woods. State of the art, not so much that traditional putt-putt facility with the spinning windmills and the, and the inflatable clowns, but more so in the true art of golf. 
So if you're a golf enthusiast or if it's been a while since you've played, this is a great opportunity to get out into the, into the environment, try something new and exciting, and also to socialize with your neighbors at uh, the Gray Oaks campus. We'll be working in conjunction with the Wellness and Campus Life departments on that campus to provide this outing to both sets of residents. Keep in mind that we will still adhere to CDC recommendations during this particular outing. So at this time, mask wearing would still be a requirement, but as we get closer to that day, we'll have more guidance on that subject. We have an upcoming research opportunity in partnership with Florida Gulf Coast University's physical therapy program. This will be an opportunity for residents to improve their exercise adherence using motivational in interviewing. What's exciting about this particular programming is that there's not one set start date for the study. Instead, there's going to be a rolling start window. So if you, uh, a specific date is not good for you to begin your involvement, that's OK, because you're going to have a wide range of when you can start your participation. Again, more information will be released as this uh, study is finalized, but it will likely come sometime in the second quarter of 2021. Sherlock Jr. is a silent film from the 1920s, and we're going to bring that film to life here in the Sheffield Theater. A piano accompaniment will be played over the film by our director of music, John Fenstermaker. We have two opportunities for our residents to come to the Sheffield Theater and watch that showing on Friday, February 19th. Check with the clubhouse front desk. There may still be tickets available. If there are, this is one that you certainly don't want to miss. We also have our second in our set of campus tours. This one focusing on the trees and the orchids around campus. Our last campus tour had a great resident uh, participation. We had upwards of 40 individuals, uh, both riding in trams provided by our partners, as well as a small parade of golf carts following those trams. So if viewing the campus through a different lens is something for you, make sure to call and reserve your spot on the tram. Or if you have your own golf cart, follow along. Or if you're somebody who missed out on the tram, ask your neighbor who has a golf cart. See if you can ride along with them. We have one more musical concert that will take place here in the Sheffield Theater on Thursday, February 25th. And what's unique about the Dixieland Band is that they're going to make their musical selection specific to this environment. So in an outdoor environment, they may have more brass, more woodwinds, uh, uh, other specific instruments. They're going to take a look at the Sheffield Theater and make sure that what instruments they're playing match our environment here. Following this uh, musical presentation, we'll be transitioning back to the auditorium where we can offer more space and have more attendees. And finally, this is an exciting one. In March, we have the Bauer School of Music coming for a, or, uh, a musical presentation in the Bauer Chapel. What's exciting about this, no tickets. Open admission for the first time since pre-pandemic days. So mark your calendars. Monday, March 22nd, one showing only, 4 p.m. in the Bauer Chapel. We hope to see you there. So now with a healthcare update, I'd like to invite Diana Bailey. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you, Robert. Um, a fun side effect of this COVID pandemic has been to witness the men's creation of their beards and mustaches and when they take off their uh, mask it's been pretty shocking at times so thank you robert so so vaccinations where did we end up this has been quite an exciting time period we ended up with a total vaccination count of 1991 people that we vaccinated 
almost 95% of our residents have been vaccinated and we are up to 55% of our staff population. Um, it was quite a feat and it, it took a full team, uh, but we were close to 2,000 vaccinations, which is very, um, very, very positive. Going forward, what are we expecting? Uh, we are being told by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services and uh, local community that we are and should expect by the middle of July the vaccinations from the Johnson & Johnson Company should be available within the Chateau and the Physician's Clinic. So we are hoping and praying that that does take place and the vaccinations become uh, much more prevalent in the community. Um, but that's as of today what we are being told um, is the plan. Okay, a little bit about our uh, continued testing protocol. As of the 14th of February, we have tested or completed 12,488 COVID tests. And within our community, we're continuing to uh, see a positivity rate of 1.1%. And to continue, while our local area is reducing, we're still doing very, very well. The state percent positivity is almost 7% currently. And the Collier positivity is running about 6.76%. So overall, we're doing very well. And just a reminder, uh, currently we're testing the Chateau staff and residents on a weekly basis. And we're testing 20% of our other departments on a monthly basis. And all independent residents are tested on an as-need basis. So overall, as of the 14th, um, we've had for positive cases 21 residents, which comes out to 1.2% positivity, and 105 uh, staff members who have tested positive, which comes out to a 1.1%. Now off of the COVID topic. Um, with regard to our clinic, um, we continue to grow, which is very exciting. Um, I've heard a lot of rumors out there that our physicians are no longer taking residents. That is inaccurate. Our clinic is open. Uh, we do have, um, at this point in time, one of our physicians is off on maternity leave. So we are asking residents, if you are wanting to join our clinic, we may ask you to hold off for about a month until you meet with your uh, respected doctor that you're interested in uh, just because our um, the need is going to be increased while our third doctor is off on maternity leave uh, so if you can if you do need to see us um, our nurse practitioner is available for you so if you do not have a doctor similar to um, or due to physician movement in town similar to dr. Ferguson uh, leaving the area um, if you're looking to join our practice, just please, I ask you to have some patience, but we will have you in and we'll do a sit and meet and greet with the physician of your choice and um, have you join our practice um, within about a month's period. But we will accommodate you and uh, if there is a need, just call the clinic and we will set up a time period for you. Okay, and that is all I have. And now we have Bern Geary for uh, representing Orchid Terrace. And stay healthy, everybody. Good afternoon, everyone. I unfortunately do not have a mustache as good as Robert's. So I'm working on that, but not yet. So I wanted to come and give an update on Orchid Terrace. We, last time I spoke, had were just finishing the renovation of four of our apartments upstairs, and we very fortunately are continuing the apartment renovation and just started four more rooms. So this, we are going in and doing a complete revamp of the rooms. We are switching to an all new standard of stainless steel appliances, new countertops, a very nice new light gray LVT flooring, uh, new white cabinetry, new appliances throughout, uh, plantation shutters, 
we're doing a step in shower so it's just completely recessed right on the level uh, toe kick lighting which that's something we've appreciated from all our residents they've really enjoyed that uh, additional closet space some nice new uh, cabinets in those closet and we're continuing that renovation so as we do have apartments open they are being renovated so if you're feeling if you're starting to think you might need a little more help you're thinking assisted living might be for you down the line please reach out to myself or Karen we'd love to give you a tour let you know of what the apartments are coming up what availability we have and you know really what life in Orca Terrace is like and I do want to start off by giving a shout out to our activity department Throughout uh, the last year of COVID-19 restrictions, they've really done an amazing job providing uh, different activities for the residents, uh, all the scheduled visitations. Instead of allowing people one-on-one -on -one to come in the building, we have to do one-on-one -on -one visitation in our visiting room. And I'm very happy to announce that we finally have our pet visits back. And many of you that have stayed at the Chateau have had the pleasure of meeting Lucy. Diane is golden. Well, I do have, this is Scuba. She's my four-year-old Golden, and she is starting to come in. I was MOD this past weekend and did a test run with her, brought her to Lilac around all the residents, and she behaved better than I expected, and really the residents loved her, had a lot of fun, so we are up in full swing bringing our pet visits back in. So that's something that all our residents have really enjoyed, uh, getting to see the dogs and different visits throughout the week. And we are starting to work with a few local businesses where bringing in some new catered events. So we're going to be bringing local small businesses, partnering with them and providing different opportunities for our residents to experience food that they wouldn't be able to have since they've been uh, staying in the facility more than normal. So we're really working to create that social experience for all our residents that they are able to have at Orca Terrace that they wouldn't normally. So if you have any questions, please reach out to myself or Karen. We'd love to tell you what's going on at Orca Terrace and hopefully help you out. Next, Jill will be giving a marketing update. Hello, and uh, warm greetings to you from the very busy sales and marketing departments um, on all three campuses. Um, let's start with the um, original campus where um, currently we have 86 uh, percent of our um, homes occupied. That is the um, highest occupancy rate that we've had in two years now. And along with the 86 percent, we also have 10 apartments that are um, under refurb right now um, awaiting new residents. Um, over at Orchid Terrace, we have 88% of those apartments occupied um, with uh, two or three of them, I think, that are under refurb right now. And um, we are very pleased at the original campus to um, welcome a new sales counselor to our team. Her name is Tiffany Mullen. This is her second week with us. And um, she is, uh, through the orientation, and uh, now working very hard to um, understand the differences between all of our apartments. Um, this coming Friday, February 19th, we will be hosting our, um, our next prospect event at the Country Club of Naples, uh, right in our backyard. We have um, 45 prospects that are gonna be joining us for that lunch and learn. And um, because the response has been so great, uh, we have a backup date with, I think, 15 people that have signed up for that, and that'll be uh, next Tuesday, the 23rd. Over at our Gray Oaks campus, things are popping there as well. Um, we have 95% of those um, apartment homes occupied in independent living, and uh, I think we have um, two, actually, that are under refurb right this second. Um, we have also welcomed a new um, sales counselor uh, slash administrator. Her name is Megan Wisely, and uh, she's been with our team for now two weeks and um, is also uh, very busy learning the, um, all that there is to know about independent living and assisted living and memory care on both campuses. Um, over at Oakstone, we have 89% um, occupancy 
with, um, I believe, two new people, one in um, assisted living and one in memory care, moved in today. And finally, at um, Moorings Park at Grand Lake, um, Building K has 64% um, of it has already been sold. And it was just released in mid-January, I think it was. So we have released Building L, Lakeview. And those sales are also going great as well, with 50% um, of those apartments that have um, holds or solds on them. And uh, we continue to be very busy over at Grand Lake with the prospect events as well. Um, there is a hard hat tour for um, prospects to visit the um, clubhouse um, and see the views and um, what it's like under construction there. Uh, that's happening, I think, on the 23rd of this month. And um, continuing to have um, monthly prospect events along with real realtor webinars. Um, and so that's it from um, our world. Up next, we have Amanda Addison. Hello, everyone, and good afternoon. All right. There we go. So today I wanted to report, um, I am very happy to announce that we are starting our caregiver support group back up. Um, we are going to be um, having it every second Friday of the month, starting in March, with our first meeting being Friday, March 12th from 11 to noon in the Orchid Terrace Multipurpose Room, which we all refer to as the Bridge Room. Um, I know this is something that has been on hold for a while, and a lot of our caregivers are really excited to have it back, and so are we. So we are going to be um, having this reoccurring meeting every second Friday of the month, um, same time, 11 to noon, in the same location. We would like uh, caregivers to RSVP, and my number is here. Um, 239-643-9170. Please just let us know that we're coming so that you're coming so we can prepare for you. Um, all caregivers are welcome on the original campus. We will be holding a separate caregiver support group for Gray Oaks and Grand Lake. So this will be advertised in the weekly newsletter and then also placed on the monthly calendars. And there'll be three partners here on the campus that will be participating in this, which is Emilio Chaviano, our Director of Ministry, Kelly Russo, Best Friends Master Trainer, and myself. So please uh, RSVP to me, and we are really excited to get this going, and if you have any questions, please let us know. All right, and up next is Scott Millward. Hello, good afternoon. Again, Scott Millward, uh, Director of uh, Buildings and Grounds. Um, we always have lots of projects to talk about. This uh, month we have four that I'll be speaking about today. First project I have uh, to talk to you about is the street lighting replacement. Uh, this is um, a phased project which is um, which means there are many light features, light, light fixtures all over campus. Um, so we've broken this up into phases. We do a section each year. This year, the section uh, we will be uh, replacing is around the Chateau Loop. There's approximately 40 light fixtures of uh, 40 street lights around this loop. Um, this, um, besides new features or new fixtures, we will be upgrading uh, from these yellow HID lights to the new LED lights, which will give us a much brighter light. Um, uh, longer uh, longevity with um, with less uh, energy reduction or less energy usage so we'll have energy reduction so this project will be completed by Beaumont Electric um, the light poles began to arrive last Tuesday the underground utility locating will occur this week um, that's to, to make sure we don't dig anything we don't expect to uh, test holes um, and material deliveries will continue uh, the contractor will be around campus uh, around this section, this area, digging up a few of these light bases, light pole bases, just to make sure that they have the project uh, well orchestrated and they know what to expect underground 
so that they can be effective when they start. Um, the real project uh, will have full crew on, on approximately the week of the 22nd. This project would expect to complete around May 21st or May of uh, this year. Next project is the Prestige Plaza. This is a landscape improvement project uh, with patio pavers, benches, and new plantings. Uh, the center feature of this is a raised planter with wind sculptures. Uh, we don't have wind sculptures as of yet on campus, but we're trying to uh, move away from many fountains and, and try uh, wind sculptures. So I'm excited about that. Um, <clears throat> if you visited this area uh, before, you've probably most likely seen golf carts parked on the patio of this existing area uh, off of the Portico Share in front of the Chateau. So that will no longer be. This project will incorporate six dedicated golf cart stalls uh, for street side parking. And the anticipated uh, completion of this project is May. Next project, uh, Robert Sorensen um, highlighted this a little bit, so artificial putting green uh, replacement. So Crawford has done a great job with many landscaping features around campus, but um, they've struggled a little bit to maintain this um, uh, golf greens and the quality that I think uh, they should be maintained in. Uh, so this project will uh, convert this area into a, a much more desirable situation, uh, take away some of the ongoing maintenance and replace the predominant, what you see in the picture and what uh, Robert referred to as the browning of grass. We had to pre-spray it with a herbicide to kill off the Bermuda grass. Bermuda grass uh, requires a lot of fertilization and irrigation, much more than zoysia. So we'll be replacing that area with zoysia grass on the chipping uh, uh, area and putting area. There'll still be some contouring, so folks who want to practice their chipping skills can take uh, a target and some balls out there and still chip on that area, and it'll be a nice green space. The existing putting green, which uh, again is a natural turf, will be converted to synthetic turf, and uh, it'll be approximately a six-hole putting green, and um, about half the size what we are now, but, but again, from what we've uh, done with um, an advisory group, a resident advisory group of golfers, uh, they have... Uh, stated that this is more desirable. It'll be a consistent putting surface and much more um, likely to be practiced on. Uh, this project, uh, this synthetic turf will actually be installed by Southwest Greens. Um, if you want to visit their website and see what to anticipate, you can do that. Uh, the pod project time frame for this project is expected to be about three months. Uh, the last one is, again, another phased project of milling and paving of uh, roadway surfaces around campus. The area for this year is the main drive, which is uh, from the guard shack at the end of the pavers up to the main intersection um, at the fountain there, a little bit left to the G uh, entrance and all the way up to the Chateau Loop uh, entry. So that whole section of Morings Park main drive would be uh, milled down and repaved. Uh, the end of the paving project would be the uh, new lines. Uh, and then it would have to cure before we'd come back and finish that project uh, with, um, with seal coating. But it'll, it'll be all new, brand new asphalt for that whole main entry. So your first impression coming onto campus will be all new um, asphalt. Uh, a small section around the, um, the, the existing bus barn to the north of Orchid Terrace is also included in this project. Uh, it's just to give us some square footage. This area is uh, very alligatored up. And, um, and so we're expecting uh, this um, Orchid Terrace renovation project. Um, so this will just highlight that whole area. So this uh, area of that parking lot that's in very bad shape will be done as well as part of this paving project. Um, and that's all I have for projects to update you on. And now I would like to welcome Richard Zazaro for um, Dining Services Update. Thank you. Good afternoon and Happy New Year. I think we can still say that since I, I wasn't at the last uh, open forum, so I'll say Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, I also want to tell you that it's also my one year anniversary here at Moorings Park, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, a short time with Unidyne and then uh, one year with Moorings Park, so I thought that would be very interesting news for you guys because I know that you saw a lot of Unidyne people here, so we like to re refer to ourselves as the dining services team. I have a management update for you. Um, 
you know, our goal here is to obviously provide simply the best, and dining sometimes presents itself with some complications if we've got staffing issues or management oversight. So I got permission from uh, Ross Dickman to uh, consolidate two positions and to add another manager to the team. And his name is uh, John Belmar. And John comes to us from Capitol Grill uh, as part of his, of his experience, and he's uh, just a great guy. Uh, again, we look for a certain personality profile uh, along with skill set. And we think that this is going to add uh, some depth to the management team and some oversight to the service team, which will provide better service. So really excited about that. And then quickly, uh, I put out an amplified memo to the residents after Ross had put out his, uh, just to make a little bit more of a consolidated look at what's to come. Uh, I'm not going to read through the whole deck for you here, just that, you know, the CHL returns to 100% as of March 1st. Uh, March 1st, Park Grill returns to 100% seating. Uh, you know that we have separated lunch and dinner. We're going to continue with that format so that we can offer uh, more variety in a, uh, a specific dinner menu when we get there for Park Grill. March 2nd, uh, Trio returns to 100% uh, capacity so those actually right now that 14 day booking window is open so I advise you to go on to Resi and see if you can get yourself some reservations uh, on March 8th Clubhouse will increase to 75% we're going to bring back the singles table and uh, of course we're going to continue with the weekly menu changes and reservations there This one is a little bit of a big one because this is the one that I've been trying to, to sort of uh, reduce the amount of volume. And the only way that I can reduce the amount of in-home dining was to open up more seating. So since we've been able to, you saw Diana posted some very favorable numbers about uh, COVID and about vaccinations. And all of these things have dovetailed into our ability to open more seats up. So with that, uh, we're going to have some new in-home dining hours of ordering. Uh, don't panic. You can always leave a voicemail prior to that. If you have a golf a tea time, uh, we'll still pick up voicemails uh, in addition to those hours for ordering. Uh, we're going to continue to start the service, delivery service at 2.30 and do it building by building. We will um, uh, Keep it, keep it in the same cadence for now and see how that works. I think we could probably shrink the window and then we'd slot, start later, but I want to see how it goes first. The other thing that's not included here is picking up, and I've gotten uh, residents asking me when that might happen. So I think the next um, communication that comes out towards the end of, of March when we move to, um, uh, move to some more capacities in Clubhouse will include more information about catering and information about um, you know uh, the, the topics of uh, you know when you can um, expect to pick up your meals and where you could do that. I th I was only here for a short amount of time before we uh, went totally to in-home dining, and I know that the salad bar was like sort of a catalyst for residents to come in and pick up. So that's not going to be there. Um, so it. It's only just a convenience piece for you to come in a certain time. So I haven't forgotten about it. I just haven't worked it into the schedule yet. Uh, the other uh, important factor here is that we are restoring the four-point delivery fee. Um, and I'll be more than happy to take questions, call my office, talk to me, stop me in the dining room to have a discussion about that. Still offering special occasion menus and still serving seven days a week. So... Nothing's changed there. We are um, adding an entertainment um, uh, rotation based on feedback from our holidays that we've done here, uh, Valentine's Day and through Christmas and New Year's. So we are going to start, and the schedule will be posted on the neighborhood website, that we'll be starting March the 4th with a live music in I believe it's going to be the Park Grill is the first rotation. It'll be every Thursday 
and then we'll move the following Thursday to Clubhouse and to Trio, and then we'll repeat that. And we're going to keep that going for a couple of months, and you'll see uh, violin, cello, uh, uh, piano, no singing, uh, every, and we're going to probably keep it to two, two max two instruments at one time. So I think that's really um, exciting because it'll add to the ambiance of uh, the restaurants as we continue to, uh, you know, work on the cuisine and the service. It's just one piece of uh, a total experience for you guys. I don't have a slide up there about Park Grill, but there is um, some information that's going, going to be coming out about Park Grill. Uh, I know I've, I've addressed you before about looking for a specific chef. Uh, that really hasn't bared much fruit. However, the existing culinary team, I think, has really stepped up to the plate to uh, provide some uh, some great food. The service scores are indicating that, and that uh, we're going to introduce some theme weeks into in the park grill, and uh, those communications will come via uh, neighborhood website, and I'll be sending those out. So, as always, we look forward to serving you. Look forward to seeing you. Thank you. And now, Emilio, you're up. Good afternoon, everyone. Chaplaincy update. I don't have a lot to tell you today, but uh, I'm excited about this uh, class that will start actually today on the 19th of February. Uh, by the time you see this, we, we would have had the first session, which is an introduction. And there are five more. You see the dates here. Uh, they happen every Friday for six weeks at 10 o'clock in the morning. And I'm really excited about the uh, theme. It's about six decisions that you can make that will change your life. And so I uh, invite you to turn out. It's going to be right here in the CHL conference room. Now, the seating is uh, a little limited, only about 10 people. So. Um, uh, we're limited to that. Uh, if you come to chapel services, you can sign up. Let us know you're coming. I have a couple more announcements. Uh, on the 21st of February, which is this coming Sunday, we're going to have what we call at the Bower Chapel an in-service offering. And what that means is that the gifts, the offerings that you bring to the chapel service at Bower Chapel will be 100% designated to a local charity. I'm talking about St. Matthew's House. Many of you know about St. Matthew's House. It's a great place where people receive many wonderful services in this community. Now, we were told that uh, if we gave this offering in the month of February, a donor would double it. So I encourage you to attend the service on the 21st, this coming Sunday. And if you cannot come, but you would like to contribute, be sure you bring your offering to the chapel or get it to me uh, the following week as early as possible so that we can process it. And uh, last but not least, I think it's a very exciting and wonderful announcement. On the 14th of March, which is a Sunday, Attendance at the Bower Chapel will be at 100%, no limit. So I understand that we have a seating capacity of 262. So on the 14th of March, hopefully we will have 262. It's up to you. Thank you. And now Celeste is going to wrap it up. Thank you to all of my colleagues today who shared some important information with you. 
I would like to wrap things up today by also providing some information that I think you will find interesting. The first uh, thing I'd like to mention, and you really cannot see that very well, I know that organizational chart that's up there on the slide, but you can always view it on the neighborhood website, as I mentioned earlier, under Management Executive Corner. But I am posed with the question quite often, Celeste, what are your responsibilities here in your role as Associate Executive Director? And it's interesting, Richard mentioned that he's been here one year, and I too have now been here one year in this new role. It's hard to believe January 27th was my one year anniversary. I, uh, I try not to count the time I was away, so I just say now I've been here a total of 19 years, but there was a little bit of a, a separation time there, but I am so thrilled to be back and I do just want to remind everyone what my responsibilities are. Certainly I can help you, help navigate you in any direction that's needed. Uh, my number one role always is to be the resident liaison. So if there is something that you need assistance with, a question about, you have a concern with, or yes, e I even like to take compliments, please, you can call me, you can email me, reach out to me at any time. I also oversee the wellness department. Robert Sorensen, who spoke to you earlier today. Uh, Robert has a wonderful team of exercise specialists, as you know. They do an awesome job. If you're not involved in the wellness department and all of the wonderful things they offer, I hope that you will look into that. Uh, they ha hold a special place in my heart, as you know. That was my former role. And uh, Robert does a great job overseeing all of that, that um, very, very talented team. He also oversees Campus Life, Mitch Swanson, Selena Gonzalez, Kim Willis, our art instructor, and also John Fenstermaker, who is our music director. So all of that falls under the wellness department. Emilio just spoke to you, our director of ministry. We're so thrilled that he's here and has joined us. Um, he's been here a little over three months now. He's hired a wonderful part-time chaplain Jesse who I hope all of you have met she is um, focused mostly on the Chateau residents the Orchid Terrace residents and the Oakstone residents in addition I oversee the concierge team that's Ellen at the clubhouse front desk and Carmen here at the Center for Healthy Living uh, reception area and you heard from Bern today. Bern Geary is also our new Orchid Terrace Administrator, almost three months in that role. Bern, he's already doing a fabulous job. The residents and the partners who work in Orchid Terrace are excited about him being their new leader. And um, he has a director of nursing, Michelle Manchester, who works there under him. Also, he mentioned the wonderful activities department. And also, some of you may have interaction with Deborah De, De, excuse me, Deborah Derjinski, and she is the office coordinator at Orchid Terrace. And then last but not least, Kim Guelfi. Many of you know Kim. She was formerly with Dining Services for many years. She transitioned also within the past, I would say, four or five months over to become our new move-in coordinator. And Kim is doing a fabulous job. Our move-in satisfaction scores are sky high, thanks to her. And uh, she really uh, has made a big difference in, in implementing satisfaction in all areas of our new move-ins. So that's the team. Um, certainly, I also am uh, uh, assisting Ross Dickman, our Vice President of Operations, in any areas he needs and I'm happy to serve you, as I mentioned, in any way I can. A couple of reminders for you. It's time for the annual resident survey. That'll be coming very soon. That'll come out um, in mid-April, or excuse me, the beginning of April, and there'll be several week window for you to fill uh, in that survey and complete that survey and turn it back in, mail it out. Uh, we will be sending out a letter to all residents, a formal letter to let you know more details about that with the timing. But I just wanted you to know it's on our radar, it's coming soon, and for you to watch out for that letter. 
A new program that I've implemented uh, that began at the beginning of this year was Coffee and Chat with Celeste. Those sessions take place monthly. I have them in the billiards room over in the activity center. I've tried to keep it at a small, intimate group of no more than 16. And really, it's just been a nice way to have open dialogue with residents, uh, improve the communication, hear any concerns, suggestions. Uh, t we had a meeting uh, this week, and uh, someone posed uh, some of the questions of, Celeste, is this fact or fiction? And I like that because I can uh, give you the facts and uh, really make sure that you, you know uh, what is going on here on the original campus. What I do after each of those meetings is I get back to every resident who attended in writing and follow up on what we discussed. And then if there were any questions they had that I could not answer at the time, I also notate that in the uh, letter that I send back to them. And then I'm using all of those questions and concerns and topics that came up during the coffee and chat to have a framework for this open forum every month. So many of the things that you've heard from my colleagues today came up at the um, coffee and chat with Celeste. And it helps guide us in what's going on, what kinds of questions all of the residents have. And I hope it's helpful to you. If you would like to join me in March, I ask that you RSVP to Carmen at the CHL front desk. I'd love to see you there. Speaking of Kim Guelfi, Kim now oversees our parking here on the original campus. And as many of you have joked with me over the past year, it was uh, one of those duties I could not wait to get rid of. But really, we do know how important parking is. And Kim has done a great job of handling all of the parking. I thought it would be a good time, though, for me to review some reminders about parking here on this campus. And the first one is, if you have any questions or concerns, of course, please contact Kim. Her number is 239-919-1691. Also a reminder that all vehicles here on this campus must be registered. So any resident who owns a vehicle, if you're keeping it here on this campus, you must have it registered. You can do that also through Kim. If you purchase a new car or anything on your vehicle changes, your license plate or anything of that nature, please also contact Kim. We have a wonderful database where we keep track of all of the cars, vehicles here on the campus for our residents and their parking spaces, and we need to keep that updated. So we appreciate knowing that information. If for some reason you want to permanently exchange your parking space, occasionally this comes up where residents have a preference and they want to exchange their parking space with another resident. As long as the two parties agree, we just need to know about it. Please do not do it unless you let Kim know. Last but not least would be parking of golf carts. Again, we track all of the golf carts here on the campus. If you are a resident with a golf cart, we ask that you let Kim know so that we can provide you with a decal, the same type of decal that goes on your vehicle. And also, if you're getting a new golf cart, we can let you know where you are permitted to park your golf cart. A hot topic is hot wire. This comes up frequently at my coffee and chat sessions, and I wanted to provide you with the latest information. We have now ended the hot wire launch phase. We are happy to say that most of our residents here on the campus, with the exception of our ghost residents, have been transferred over to hot wire services. We began normal operations outside of the launch phase on February 1st. I would like to remind you about a few things. If you have never scheduled your education session with the Hotwire educator, please call the customer service number, which I have noted there on the slide, and tell them you'd like to set up the one hour complimentary education session. It doesn't matter that you may have had Hotwire for two months now. It's always good to get a reminder and a refresher 
And I've heard from some residents who've had the educator that they learned things they didn't even know that, that the remote control um, had capabilities of doing. Also, the educator can help you with your telephone and your voicemail. So I think we want to make sure that all of you take advantage of that complimentary service. You should have also seen uh, advertisement in the weekly newsletter that we made laminated channel lineups for uh, residence uh, units. So you can come and see Ellen at the front desk in the clubhouse. She will provide you with uh, two laminated copies of all of the channels and what channel it, number it is associated with so that you have an easy access to a guide to look at. Uh, we hope that you'll uh, utilize that. We thought that was an important um, item for all of you to have to help you with the new hot wire system. And last, I'd just like to let you know that our uh, weekly uh, visits by the launch account manager, Adam, who many of you got to know, have ended. Since we are out of the launch phase, we no longer will have those weekly visits. Uh, but we do ask that you, if you have any issues with Hotwire, any services interrupted, to please call the number up on your screen. Prior, you were given a different number, which was the launch number. We now would like you to call this customer care number, which is 1-800-355-5668. Also, Carmen and Ellen at the concierge desks have little business cards with those numbers on with that number on it so that you can take it home uh, and put it on a refrigerator or somewhere important for you to remember if you have any issues and just lastly to let you know remember that hotwire now services your televisions your telephones and your and your internet service This past Monday, February 15th, we celebrated President's Day. Here on the campus, we celebrated with a tribute to our Moorings Park veterans, who we are so very proud and honored to have here living amongst us. We also dedicated the new Veterans Plaza by hosting a military veterans flag ceremony. The photos I have here do not do it justice. Uh, they were just some photos snapped on my telephone, and I'm sure more uh, professional photographs will be coming soon. But I didn't want to finish out today's presentation without honoring all of our veterans here on all of the campuses at Moorings Park, but especially here on this campus. We salute you, and we thank you for your service. Well, that concludes our presentation for today. As you have heard, it's been a very busy month, and we're all looking forward to that easing of restrictions coming soon on our campuses over the next month. I thank all who presented today, and I wish all of our residents well. I hope you stay healthy, and we'll look forward to seeing you at the next meeting, which will be the town hall meeting on March 19th. Thank you.